Before, before coming here, I worked uh, for a while in North Carolina a couple of years ago. And uh, I was uh, several winters there, so inspired to be here in the north, I believe that here we are warmer, at least this, uh, the last two years. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what's that effect on the insects. Uh, if you look for pictures of uh, insects and freezing in their internet, there are very few of them. Uh, there are a couple here. Uh, this is some uh, coccinellus, coccinellus, ladybugs, that probably were affected by a sudden freeze. And maybe they can survive or not, depending on the, how long this is the time. Uh, there's another, there's another five, and this one probably is the same. So depending on the temperature, they can survive or not. Uh, but this is a very interesting picture. So this is a picture of a rose where it has a several aphids. So the aphids it's not look very well here, but there are some aphids in this part. And in the middle of that, there is a parasitized aphid. So most of the aphids probably look for refuge under the leaves, whereas this parasitized aphid is there. It doesn't have protection. So diapause is a process uh, for which the insects uh, uh, slow the metabolism and at the same time they can uh, produce some uh, uh, body fluids that avoid the water crystallize and expand in the cell. So and that's a process that uh, depends on the day, to play, day length and also on the temperature. So this is a process that starts early in the fall and it requires some acclimat acclimatization. So, and uh, what's happening now is that we were having high temperatures most of the winter. So we were having temperatures above 50 degrees most of the time. So the aphids were active. Um, the same was for the parasitoids. So and at that time, we were having populations of parasitoids, natural enemies that were controlling the aphids. However, with this uh, uh, sudden freeze, uh, this is what it happened. Probably we have here a picture of healthy aphids versus some parasitized aphids. So when there's a freeze, uh, and in, this, in this case, we are just putting an example that there's a 30% parasitism. There are 10 aphids there, maybe those three brown ones are parasitized. So, if it comes a sudden freeze, so most of the healthy aphids are going to go down, whereas the parasitized are going to remain there. So they're going to be exposed to the, to the temperatures. And most likely, if we see how many are going to die, some of the healthy aphids are going to go to the ground, are not going to be able to survive. But the parasitized are going to die. So in this case, for example, if we change the percentage mortalities of these aphids, we're going to see that more, maybe 60% of the parasites that were going to be beneficial are going to be dead, going to be dead whereas the healthy only 28%. So, so these are temperatures that we're having last week, probably are more going to be affected the natural enemies. That's very important. So right now, most of these aphids that we are adding in our fields were ground down to the ground, but also very well protected by the leaves. And in the literature, there are some examples of that. And this is a study that was conducted in Belgium, and it was done from 2001 to 2002. And it started in October, and it finished in March. And on this, they have two strains of aphids. This is the English aphid with the long cornicles. And then they have two strains of uh, parasitoids. Okay? And then you can see here, the ones that they don't have the parasitoids, they have higher numbers with a with white square on the white triangle. So more parasitoids over the time. So most likely, what's going to happen this time is that we're going to have a lot of aids. The aids were not affected severely by this phase. But the parasitoids were affected. So, uh, in addition to that, I just passed uh, those two pages 
And what is the uh, recommendations of these epicytes for aphids? In the other one, aphids and armyworms, in the other one, uh, it's a table of the armyworms uh, that we are counting every week. So what's happening is that this year, we have a very big abundance of army worms starting with February, and that was not reported before. Not only that, if you look at the page, you can see in the black part is that there are some army worms. There was a uh, year in 2006 that probably were more abundant. But today, just seeing, uh, there is a student that's helping us here. She went and count the number of aphids on the trap. So on three days, since last Friday until today, she found 171 aphids, so that data is not there. So the number of army worms is going to be very abundant this year, so you need to be uh, into account what to do with that also. So among the recommendations for aphids, uh, what's recommended there, uh, most of the insecticides are pyrotrons, so you need to probably use the rate that is the higher rate or apply the pesticide, but don't apply early. Try to apply when you have the threshold. Then you it for food. So that's all I have to do. And if you want to ask me any questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you.